Welcome, thanks for coming out uh, to our semi-annual evening with the STARS event. We have this, uh, of course, every fall and every spring. Uh, so, uh, you know, it looks like tonight we're clouded out. Uh, in fact, uh, Bill Cook and I, uh, the other uh, astronomer who will be back shortly, uh, he and I kind of joke at the beginning of each semester, that, well, when do we want it to be cloudy this semester? <laughs> As we're trying to pick out the date. Uh, but uh, cross our fingers, uh, either uh, uh, probably the, uh, the first quarter, uh, the weekend of the first quarter moon in April is when we'll try this uh, again. But uh, at any rate, I'm Doug Patterson, I teach astronomy here. And uh, before, we, uh, before we begin with uh, Jay Manifold's talk, I uh, have someone, uh, Stephen Bryan, who would like to uh, especially speak to uh, those of you students who are here. Uh, we're working on building up a, uh, an astronomy club. Hello, my name is Steve Black. Right here we have a sign-up sheet for an astronomy club. If you're a student and you're interested, please sign it and put your email address. Uh, a lot of things to get done around here needs to be student-driven. And we can help improve our facility, some of the things we do, and also pick this guy's brain and the other professor's brain a little bit. Slim and kind of help each other out. So, <laughs> just really easy. If you're interested at all, sign it. If you're not, sign it anyway. It's no commitment to it. It just helps us get it going. So, thank you. And also, uh, for those of you uh, who are in a class, uh, make sure that you sign the appropriate sign-up sheet here if you want, uh, if you want the extra credit. Uh, keep in mind, if your name isn't on here, you weren't here. Uh, so if you want the credit, make sure you find the appropriate uh, uh, sign-up sheet for your particular course and uh, sign up. But at any rate, without uh, further ado, uh, Jay Manifold, board member of the Astronomical Society of Kansas City, ASKC, uh, does considerable amount of, uh, of work down at Powell Observatory showing people the night sky. And tonight he's going to tell us about uh, doom and gloom, death from above via giant rock, and uh, how to survive uh, or how to save civilization. Uh, Jack. Thank you, Doug. Uh, just the first four words uttered by every speaker is this thing on? Yes. Um, okay, good, because I kind of can't tell uh, without a monitor or whatever they call those things. I'm not that much of a hardware guy. Can't tell. Um, okay, yeah, this is the cloudy night version. I prepared with a clear night and a cloudy night version. The Cloudy Night version is longer because I'm your only source of entertainment, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, we do do this a couple of times a year. I've given uh, different versions of this talk a couple of times before. Uh, this one's hopefully a little bit more uh, up to date and tweaked a little bit, but consider yourself all to still be beta testers because uh, I don't do this for a living, so you know it maybe gets a little bit better each time. But but that's about as good as it gets. Uh, we are going to talk about asteroids, uh, go through some basics, some impacts you've probably heard of, some craters you can actually visit, some impacts you probably have not heard of, a uh, phenomena called black swans, which is where I get all interdisciplinary on you, and uh, then into global catastrophic risks and how to save civilization. And you don't get out of here without uh, an ASKC commercial at the end. Uh, Okay, so the basics. What are asteroids? Well, it's any small solar system body that isn't a comet or a meteoroid. The formerly known as the largest asteroid, number one, Ceres, is now actually classified as a dwarf planet. It was discovered on the very first night of the 19th century from the middle of Palermo, Sicily, which is a fairly large city now, but they didn't have to worry about light pollution back then, so they could do really good astronomy uh, pretty much anywhere. Uh, the stuff in the fine print on the slide here is uh, the somewhat notorious Pluto decision uh, of the 2006 uh, International Astronomical Union General Assembly. If we were down at Powell Observatory, I would go on a little rant about that, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll spare you that and just say that uh, as far as the ASKC is concerned, Pluto is still very much planet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, the next kind of obvious question is where are asteroids? Well, the vast majority of them, even more than this diagram really indicates, and I keep hitting the wrong button on this thing too, uh, are in the main belt, okay? There are uh, some that are outside of it, farther out, uh, what are called the Greeks and Trojans, that are what are called the L4 and L5 points, 60 degrees ahead and behind of Jupiter's orbit. 
And there's a group called the Hildas that, that are in a 3 2 orbital resonance with Jupiter. But the ones we're interested in mostly are the main Belvins and to some extent are the ones that come in here, which are the ones I'm going to be talking about in a minute. Uh, nearly all the distances that you're going to see on diagrams uh, in this talk are in astronomical units, or AU. And one AU is the Earth's distance from the Sun. It's 93 million miles. It's almost exactly 150 million kilometers, which is a nice round number. And in fact, I'll be using most of the metric in the talk. Uh, it's also continentally just about 500 light seconds. And another way of thinking of one AU is that it's almost exactly 400 times the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Uh, now, this diagram doesn't show the actual present position of the planets, but this one does. Uh, and this is where Ceres is right now. It's almost exactly opposite uh, the Sun from us, so we wouldn't be able to see it tonight even if it were clear. Uh, the other planets are in these positions as of today. Um, tell you a few things about this diagram. Um, the, as you can probably tell, we're, uh, we're looking down on the sun. We are on the, basically the north pole of the sun from about a billion kilometers or so. Uh, so the sunrise and sunset line on Earth would be a tangent like this. And from that, you can tell that Jupiter's in the evening sky right now, which it is. And Mars, we see more in the morning sky. Uh, here in about January, we're going to catch up with Mars, and it's going to be pretty bright. It's going to be about there. Uh, this line points to where we see the sun in the sky at the vernal equinox. So when we're, that's when we're over here. So when we're crossing this line, is at the autumnal equinox. So we were there on September 22nd. Now we're here on October 24th. Everything goes counterclockwise, OK? Um, and there's going to be several diagrams like this, which is why I went through, uh, went through all that stuff. A uh, couple of other things on here. Um, the asteroid orbits, you'll see part of them in this light blue and like a turquoise color and part of them in a dark blue. That shows uh, where they intersect the plane of the Earth's orbit is where the colors change, okay? And this thing here is called the line of apsides. It connects those two points. And when an asteroid orbit crosses Earth's orbit and one of these transitions is very close to Earth's orbit, that means it can come close to Earth in all three dimensions. And you're going to see several of those uh, later on. Um, I think that's everything I needed to explain on these. And there's going to be a few more of these. I'm going to try to go through these very fairly quickly. Uh, there are special classifications for what we call near-Earth objects. And the first one is called AMORS for uh, asteroid 1221 AMOR, discovered in 1932. Um, they cross the orbit of Mars, and they can approach the Earth, just like this one does. Okay. Um, there are about 2,700 of these known now, and over 200 of those uh, were discovered this year. Um, asteroids have, uh, they may have a serial number, sometimes they also have a name, and they always have some kind of designation indicating when they were discovered. Uh, some of the names, because if you discover an asteroid, you actually get to name it. Um, it's kind of like a buy a star thing, except this is real. Okay. Um, one of the Amor asteroids, number 39557, is named Gilgan. Uh, it was discovered as 1992 JG, and somebody thought, well, that's nice, and they were a John Gilgan fan, so they named it after him. Uh, number 16912 is named Rhiannon. That's just so you get that song stuck in your head. Um, <laughs> number 8013 is Gordon Moore, all one word, apparently the Moore's Law guy. Uh, 3352 is McAuliffe for Krista McAuliffe. And 3552 is named Don Quixote. Um, okay, uh, more near-Earth object asteroids. Uh, Apollo's